All right, welcome to the eight characteristics of living things. The first characteristic that all living things share is that they are based on a universal genetic code. As far as we can tell, everything that's alive uses DNA as the molecule of heredity. And it's rather interesting to see how that plays out in different life forms. Second characteristics all living things show share is that they grow and develop as their time goes by. The third thing that all living things share is that they respond to their environment. This is called stimulus and response, and you need, you need to be able to identify the stimulus and the response in a given situation. So for example, the stimulus in the situation shown in the pictures is that we put a mealworm on the Venus fly trap, and this response is that the trap closes as a response to that stimulus. The fourth thing that all living things share is that they all reproduce. They all have a way to carry that genetic information into the future or to have different kinds of life forms. We have sexual reproduction, which is going to involve genders. So you're going to see me on the left and my son when he was a very young baby on the right um, because we have male and female genders, right? It's one of the more fundamental differences in life that we take for granted. For asexual reproduction, you're going to see things like sea stars or sponges, and they are are basically a society of clones. The genetic information doesn't change when you use asexual reproduction. The fifth characteristic that all living things share is that they maintain a stable internal environment. And the technical term for that is called homeostasis. And we'll be talking about mechanisms for how uh, living systems maintain homeostasis. The sixth characteristic that all living things share is that they obtain and use materials and energy. So this is a really fancy way of saying that all living things, right, have to um, use materials from their environment and energy, right? Um, or another way to put it is that all living things have a metabolism um, and a metabolic rate that can be measured. The seventh characteristic of all living things is that they're made up of cells. So on the left, you're gonna see some cheek cells. Uh, we will get your cheek cells out and stain them and look at them underneath the microscope. It's a really fun day to do. Uh, we are also going to look at um, these cells on the right, right, which we have an egg cell, a chicken egg cell, is actually the biggest cell that you interact with on a normal basis, although it's not the biggest cell out there. That would be the uh, ostrich egg. The last piece of uh, characteristic that all living things share is called as a group living things evolve. Now, I think this is a really key piece. It's as a group, right? Individuals do not evolve. Individuals do not change over time in the way we speak of when we're talking about evolution. When we're talking about evolution, we're talking about a group of living things changing over time. And so um, you be sure to ask if you have any questions or confusion on that.